Hi everyone. I thought I'd try Kari today and see if he would cooperate because I'm talking about Halloween from long ago. It's called Making Halloween, October 1989. My last one was 81. Now you will see the big changes if you listen to both of them. When does a mother start preparing for Halloween? If you're like me, you begin your elaborate preparations about 10 p.m. the night before, grabbing anything thread-worn out or out of style from your closet. On Halloween, you jab your, jam your grandfather's Hamburg on top of a child's head and say, okay, kid, with a little soot on your chin, you'd make a great bum. Trade in the hat for a seed cap, and the same outfit will also work as a farmer during the height of harvest season. I didn't always procrastinate so long. When our Rob, was old, our oldest, was seven months old, 14 years ago, I took a week of afternoons to design and stitch together a clown suit for him. The right arm and the left leg of the little flannel outfit was a solid blue. The clown's left arm and right, well, the opposite ones were tiny blue flowers. It was a conservative clown. For the top of his cute head, I found a black plastic hat, which I covered with patches from the same flannel materials. I then took yellow yarn stitched length of it together and glued it to the inside of the hat for clown hair. A red dot on his button nose and a little blush rubbed onto his cheeks and we were the best, he was the best seven month old clown for miles around. Though it took hours to put together the costume, it wasn't too outrageous. I made sure it not only functioned as a clown suit, but could keep tiny Robbie warm for the cold weather in the winter nights to come, except then he didn't sleep in that funny hat. The next year, he was a scarecrow, and his cousin Sherry was the Tin Man. The following year, Rob walked around wearing striped breeches and a black suit coat with tails and a top hat all made by his proud young mother. He was the ringmaster or lion tamer. Well, Sherry, his cousin again, was the lion. My sister Karen spent most of October sewing together a dozen wigs to make a lion mane worthy of the Wizard of Oz. Well, she kept up the tradition of making elaborate costumes for her one and only child. I did not. I went to having three more children and taught myself to innovate simple co Halloween costumes. F now our family motto is Halloween comes out of the attic or closet. All our children are old enough to rummage through the family's old clothes and become either a bum or a farmer, a scarecrow of sorts, a gangster or a princess. Though they know I do not exhaust myself sewing costumes used for one afternoon. That doesn't mean they don't try to make me feel guilty. Rachel, our youngest, regularly goes through old photo albums and points out how she, being last, gets short shafted. The other day she came to me with the hint of tears in her eyes. You never made me a Halloween costume, Mom. Don't you love me? I weaken, sweetheart, of course I love you. What do you want to be for Halloween? A dragon, she sniffled. From the closet, I got out Grandpa's Hamburg and a pipe. That's as close as this busy mother is ever going to get to a dragon. No, Halloween making costumes was not my thing. I'm sorry to say for my children, they were deprived. And, uh, and that's okay. They got through Halloween and they had fun and it didn't matter. But usually we, I tried getting my black cat to sit still, but he didn't want to. 
Oh well, Kari was here, and now he's going to doze off after leaving hair all over my shirt. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween and enjoy some treats. No tricks, though. And come back again for another column one day. Until then.